group so far, this is designed for, this is a workshop, so people take part and do their own coding. Uh, so if you're on this call, please be prepared to do some coding. If you're kind of feeling like just kind of hanging out, it's Friday night, you don't want to really code and you want to sit back and relax, we can always turn this into more of a talk and do a shorter session. But the workshop is fun because it's not that hard to do and uh, you get to, get to make your own site pretty quickly. In about an hour, you can create a uh, interactive site with AMP. So I urge you to give it a try. So this is me, my picture over here next to the actual me here in the video. You can see that like many of you, I imagine, you're uh, in your homes. This is uh, the attic of our house over here in New Jersey, near New York. It was my music studio and now it's become where I also work. I'm here now most of the time. We plan to bring the AMP Roadshow to Sri Lanka. Uh, the AMP Roadshow is a thing we run where we go to various places in the world and meet people and talk about AMP, learn from you about what you're using with AMP, what you're doing with AMP, meet with the large companies that are using it, the small companies that are using it. We plan to go to Sri Lanka, I think in April, but we canceled all of our events. So I'm sorry, we can't be there to meet you in person. It's a lot more fun in person. But the advantage is I can just get on my computer here and turn it on. And as long as the internet is working, I can say hello to people anywhere in the world. That's actually kind of neat. Anyway, enough about me. This is uh, basically, this is a compressed version of the entire first course of the AMP courses that we have. We have three AMP courses we made. <clears throat> this is the first one. We can do the workshop by doing exercises in this course and a bit of the next course actually all pretty quickly leaving out lots of stuff about the web and how it works and AMP, how it works and things like that. So uh, my goal here is to do a short, like 10 minute introduction to AMP and then get into doing some stuff together. And please let me know if you have any comments at any point. I really encourage you to actually say hello and to make comments, ask questions and to take part in this. In fact, I'm gonna start off by typing in my name over here in the chat. And I want to urge you to say hello, either on the microphone or in the chat. Just say hi. Maybe say where you're from. What you have for dinner? Anything you'd like to. I'm leaving this chat open over here. And I'll look at it as I start talking about things. Oh, there we go. Hi. Good to meet you. So this is really about the web and making the web easy to, for everyone to use and easy to build nice things for. Uh, I can't pronounce your names, but I will just say, hello, good to be here too. I'm glad to meet you. Um, I can try to pronounce your name, I don't wanna get it wrong. It'd be very embarrassing for both of us. So this is about the web and making the web easy to use for everybody. And I think as importantly, easy to make easy sites to use because you probably have heard this before if you watch any talks from anybody at Google on the web for the last several years. The web is often just too slow for people to use effectively. Uh, not always. If you're on a nice 4G connection in a city with great Wi-Fi and you're on like a nice uh, high-powered phone, often if a web page has a lot of JavaScript, large images and so on, it may not matter that much. It'll still load slowly. It's not an ideal user experience. It may take a little while before things become interactive, but it's not really so bad. But it gets worse if you're in a place that's more rural, further from big cities, or on three, people are on 3G connections. And people often in the world are using phones that are lower powered. These lower powered phones execute JavaScript more slowly and just do everything more slowly. And the last stats that I saw showed that actually 40% of connections worldwide were 2G connections. And 2G connections, if you're using a 2G connection, only sites that are pretty simple will load at all, period. I've done this before when I traveled back in the old days <clears throat> before we weren't allowed to travel anymore. Uh, I actually, my, my uh, phone provider gave me free international data, but it was 2G data. And that 2G data loads up websites very slowly. If I'm on a train over here going to New York, which I used to also do sometimes, I often have very bad connections. Some sites you know are gonna work, some sites aren't gonna work at all. And just wherever you are, a site that loads faster just feels better for users. So the goal is to make sites that are better and not be like this guy over here. He's looking at, looking at your site here at this cafe 
He's uh, waiting for it to load. He's tapping things. Nothing's happening. And look at him. He's stressed out. He's upset. He's taken up smoking and drinking to feel better about the site. And these are bad things. So you must make your site faster to save his life and make it longer. It isn't just uh, speed that's a problem. Uh, also, pages where you, uh, the, you see visible content and things load up, and then nothing actually happens for a while. You're tapping on things, trying to scroll, tapping on a menu, and nothing's happening. This is called first input delay sometimes. Also a bad user experience. And also layout stability matters too. By the way, these are all part of Google's web vitals that you may have been reading about as well. There is uh, metrics now for each of these things. Um, this one is called a content layout shift. But uh, if you're looking at a site of some sort and suddenly an image pops in, everything moves down to make room for the image, or worse yet, a video pops in, everything moves down, and suddenly you're looking at a video. Even worse, a video ad suddenly shows up and things are moving around the screen. It really disturbs people. It's not a pleasant user experience. So a goal of making sites is to avoid all of these things. Now I have to actually change slides over here. So it can be hard to do these things. AMP exists to make this easier. AMP really is a few different things, but most fundamentally, AMP is a web components library. So HTML was made a long time ago, like 30 years ago. When HTML was created, it was made for describing documents. So it was things like, this is a paragraph, this should be in bold face. Uh, HTML didn't have tags for things like, this is uh, image carousel, where you can slide images around the screen, this is a Twitter embed. This is an interactive drop-down menu. Those things didn't exist yet. As the web became more complicated and could do more things, JavaScript was used to make these things happen. And this can make things slow if you have too much JavaScript or use it unwisely. So what AMP does is adds new tags to HTML by using web components. It gives you new tags you can use to make interactions. So in general with AMP, Instead of using JavaScript for interactions, you do it in HTML with AMP's own web components. Conversely, if you make valid AMP, it discourages you from writing your own JavaScript. You can, especially in certain contexts, but in general, it's discouraged. In contrast, AMP has got its own JavaScript, which it uses to power its web components. It uses a minimal amount of JavaScript to control the screen, make sure that loading and uh, scrolling are smooth, animations are smooth and then a bit of JavaScript to make certain interactions. And finally, if you pass the rules AMP sets out for making a site that's gonna be fast, stable, and accessible for, every, for everybody, then there are web crawlers out there like Google's that are looking for sites that meet these criteria. When it finds a site like this, it will copy the HTML into its own cache. So for example, Google's web spiders out there looking for valid AMP pages, when it finds a valid AMP page, it marks that in its own system and copies your HTML into its own AMP cache. And the cache is then further optimized in various ways. Let's go on a little bit here. Uh, it will then optimize pages in a few different ways. And it looks kind of like this. Here's Google search in the US. You'll see little lightning bolts over here sometimes. You see, there's actually a feature I want to use here. How do you do this? Here it is, a pointer. Isn't this cool? I never use this pointer feature. You can see these lightning bolts here on these things. Those indicate those are AMP pages. This thing here is called the Top Stories Carousel, and everything in here is an AMP page. Let's do this live because the pointer isn't that exciting. Oh, now we're out of presentation mode. Okay, this could be a little spontaneous today. Now we're back in presentation mode. Let's just go over here and we'll use DevTools to simulate a mobile device. And we're going to go to our friend, hold on, mobile device. Here we are. We go to our good old friend, google.com, and look up something in the news. Um, oh, time in Sri Lanka. What would be in the news? I thought it could be non controversial. Uh, maybe something with sports. Baseball is a big deal over here. Actually, I know that we're, hold on, this is more appropriate, I think. How about cricket? Oh, we got other things. <laughs> oh, we get sports, not the insect. That's good. But this, here we go, here's some news about cricket. All right, so notice this is the top stories carousel. Notice these things here all have lightning bolts on them that means that they're AMP articles. If I click one of these things over here, I will get very quickly to the article. This is shown in Google's own AMP viewer, and it's so fast because they're AMP pages and because in certain cases, 
because Google knows AMP pages are fast and can control when things load, as we'll see why in a few minutes, it will actually preload your content there in an iframe that's invisible. And then you click on the link, it appears immediately. So that's kind of nice. So there it is, an AMP page. Uh, also, AMP pages do appear in Google search on desktop, but you don't get the little, little uh, badge. Let's look at this actually a little more. This is the Google AMP viewer. Let's take this out of the AMP viewer and look at this just by itself here. Again, in DevTools. I hope this is going to be an AMP page. It is AMP. OK. And we'll see a few things that are different here in DevTools. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Notice over here, after HTML, the word AMP. That's an attribute that isn't part of HTML. This indicates to web crawlers this is a valid, an attempt to make a valid AMP page, HTML AMP. Also, you see various AMP things here, AMP version number, some classes that AMP adds to style the page, and then a bunch of things over here. This, uh, this is for localization, AMP Geo, AMP consent is for a paywall, and then you'll see things here. There's an ad, there's an analytics. All these are examples of tags that AMP has added to HTML. Any questions or comments about all these things? A lot of analytics here. Wow, this is so much analytics. This is a little crazy. Wow, I, wow, okay, <laughs> I'm a little stunned. Here's a nice light box gallery. Anyway, that's kind of how AMP looks in real life. Any questions or comments about all these things? Not yet, okay. Oh, I, wow, my dog's walking upstairs. Hi, dog. That was very distracting. So there he is. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, he can go upstairs, he'll, he'll be quiet. It's good, he'll lie down over here, he'll just kind of be calm and sit with me. So there's uh, AMP for you in a nutshell. Pardon my distraction there. Anyway, AMP cache. So what's changing now about AMP, this is a big change actually, is not an AMP, but changing Google. Google has announced recently that it will start opening up this top stories carousel, not just to AMP pages, but any pages that meet Web Vitals criteria. So Web Vitals criteria are criteria, I think I mentioned earlier, that are things that make sure the page, the page loads quickly and that it's stable when it loads when it loads, you can interact with it quickly, that soon this top stories carousel will be available to any page that meets these criteria. AMP pages are designed to meet these criteria. They often do, they don't always do it, but pretty soon Google's opening this up so that any page that's fast enough and stable enough, interactive enough, can get into this top stories carousel. And the badges here may also be changing. That hasn't been announced yet. But this is a big change for AMP. So after this, making valid AMP will be quite as important because you won't get that treatment in search for just having valid AMP. It will require having a fast page. But valid AMP is still interesting because it gets you into the cache. And also, valid AMP has been carefully designed as a set of guidelines you can follow to make pages that will be fast and also accessible, that are good for people using screen readers, people with visual impairments, uh, things like that. Let us go on over here now. So the AMP cache does various things to try to make your page faster. It will actually compress images for you and use source set, the size of my device. That's kind of neat. It will try to sanitize HTML so you don't get cross-site scripting attacks, especially with, your, with less of your own JavaScript. It's very hard to have these kinds of attacks in the first place. So after all that, here's how AMP looks in real life. It's pretty simple. There is, for example, YouTube embed. Instead of embedding YouTube's JavaScript and CSS, yourself, you use AMP's AMP YouTube component. And a few things here are standard HTML attributes. A few things are different. Width and height are pretty standard attributes. It's still a best practice to always include these things, because if you include width and height, then the browser knows how to size things. But AMP, for valid AMP, requires these things. The idea being that then the browser can reserve space for this. And then whenever the YouTube is ready to pop up, it loads into its space. So it pretty much guarantees a stable layout. The problem with things shifting around tends to go away. Layout equals responsive. That's different. AMP has its own layout system. You can choose various kinds of layout. Choosing responsive means AMP will automatically make your uh, component or your HTML element smaller if the container shrinks, and it will make your element bigger if the container gets bigger. That happens automatically. One thing here is very different from normal HTML Data video ID. This is a attribute that AMP YouTube uses to tell what video to show. This is the ID of the YouTube video. You put it in there, and you're all done. There's your video. 
any questions on all of these things so far? Comments? You'll do it yourself in a few minutes. <laughs> so AMP, uh, it's somewhere in between doing things yourself from scratch with JavaScript and CSS and HTML and using a CMS to generate a site. A CMS, usually you don't program so much. Uh, if you're coding things yourself, of course, you're finding libraries that do things, you're writing your own code. AMP is somewhere in between. The HTML is yours, the CSS is yours, most of the JavaScript belongs to AMP. So it's nice for people that aren't as skilled at JavaScript, but also for those who are skilled at JavaScript, it does a lot of things for you if you're not doing things yourself. It saves you time and leaves you to work on things you care about more than recreating the interactions you use in all your sites. <laughs> Thanks for saying it's getting interesting. I'm working on it. So for these workshops over here we're gonna do, you need HTML, there's CSS already in the project, and there'll be almost no JavaScript today. Almost all just HTML and no writing of CSS today. Okay, let's get going over here on this workshop part of things. Let's see, we have now 23 people. Look at that, so we've got enough for a workshop, I think. So we're gonna use a thing here called Glitch. Glitch, you may have used before. It's an online code editor. It's handy for these workshops because if we're not in the same place, I can't see what you're doing. Your fellow participants can't see what you're doing either, but we can all share online code together. So you'll get your own URL you can use. You can share it with the group as you make your project. Everyone can see what you've done. And if you have problems, you can share it and we help you debug. Pretty handy. We're gonna be using Glitch today. You can, of course, use your own IDE and your own web server, but this is pretty useful for the workshop especially because we've got for you some starter code. So start by going here, glitch.com slash Atilda showy hyphen way. I've got it over here. I'm gonna paste this into the chat so you can find it here and go there yourself. Glitch likes to give these clever names to things with two different English words, sometimes three because there's a lot of projects now. It makes them easier to remember than some sort of long B64 encoded thing like YouTube would do. So start by going there. You'll see here it's got a bunch of stuff on it. And this is a preview of the site as it is so far. You can see it's a lovely site where you make your own cheese bicycles because cheese bicycles are important. This is the site so far. There's some starter code in here. And we can see this code. Actually, before I see the code, I want you to copy this to your own project. I did this myself before we started. There should be a button somewhere saying, click the remix or remix this or something about remixing. Remix is Glitch's word for copy this and make my own version. It's kind of like forking in GitHub. So I did this myself a few minutes ago and here is my own copy with the wonderful name Absorbed Conscious Creator. You can show the code over here. If you're there, you'll see a few directories. Um, have you gotten there? Is this working? If you're having problems, put it in the chat. Glitch can be a little bit slow to remix sometimes. It can take 15, 20 seconds to remix. Once you've done that, you've got your project, you should be good for the rest of the day, or I guess for the rest of the night. It's morning over here still. So you'll see a few things in this project once you get there. We're not gonna use the server or the node stuff. We're gonna be using only two things here. There's a couple of files in the public directory, and one of them is called index.html. We'll be using this file over here today. I don't know on Zoom, if I don't use Zoom that much. If I actually change my window so it's vertical, can you still see everything here? I know often you have to share things in this kind of this uh, landscape mode. If I do this, can you still see? If you can't see it, let me know and I will go back to the previous uh, size of the screen there. I can also zoom if it's too small. Maybe oh, I'll zoom. can see that. Oh, you can? Okay, I'll stop zooming. Yeah. We can more stuff then. All right, great. So you'll be using this index.html file over here, and also you'll be using the thing called assets. Assets are static assets that you can store on Glitch. We have a lot of images over here. To use images in your project, simply click on an image here. It will appear in a large lightbox format over here. You'll get this very long, unique looking um, URL. You can then copy it and use it in your project. So again, for images, go over to assets, click on something, copy the URL, and there you go. 
Here's index.html again. Let's see if I have more things to do here from the presentation I could have forgotten. No, there's the editor, there's images. Oh yeah, uh, this could be useful, it's not required. If you're using Chrome, you may wanna see if your page is valid AMP or not. To do that, there's two ways to do it. The first way is to install the Chrome AMP validator extension. I just find this by going over here to Google and typing in something like AMP validator extension. <coughs> and then it appears, and there it is. If you want to install this, I'm copying this link here into the chat. Again, you don't have to, but it may be useful for you. You can see it over here. I don't think, I think maybe, maybe Zoom actually shows this. You can see a very, very small looking gray circle here. This lightning bolt is very small. That actually is my AMP validator extension. That will turn green if it's on a valid AMP page, which this is not. Let's show this by going to valid AMP page. Let's go to amp.dev. Amp.dev is the site that the team that I work on makes. It's AMP's documentation and announcement website. This page is made in AMP. Notice that it looks nice here in desktop. Has cute little animations. Also looks nice in mobile. So this is um, amp.dev, and notice the lightning bolt has turned green over here. That is because this is a valid AMP page. That's nice. If I look at the, the uh, elements here in Chrome DevTools, I can see there's the AMP thing there. Again, HTML AMP and various AMP looking things over here. Let's go to a non-valid AMP page instead. For this, we're gonna have to go to a local project. I've got some things here that are not valid AMP. This here is not valid AMP. I don't know if you can see, but up here the button has turned red with a one next to it. As you can see this here, there's a pop-up saying there's an error. So the pop-up may not be appearing on your, on your Zoom screen sharing, I don't know if it is or not. But I can also do this by going to the console here and I can then append pound development equals one to the URL and then reload the page and then AMP will show errors in the console. There it is. There's my error. This is an error because if you have your AMP page on a cache, the domain may be different unless you're using signed exchanges. So in that case, a relative URL will not work because it'll be on the wrong domain. So AMP throws an error in that case. So you can do a look for valid AMP by either using the extension or by just going to the console over here after putting in pound development equals one. Which I will stick in the chat over there so you have it. Any questions on all those things? Again, valid AMP is only important if you want to get into an AMP cache. You can otherwise just do whatever you want to. <laughs> so here's our project. You see, again, there is that thing at the top with the lightning bolt in the, after the word HTML. For valid AMP, you have to have a lightning bolt there, the emoji, or the word AMP. A few more things that are required for valid AMP that are in the head. It wants you to use the UTF-8 character encoding. You have to also include, include uh, AMP's own runtime. This is the JavaScript that makes AMP able to handle things and control the page. It's called v0.js. There's that. Some more things are required there, which I won't discuss right now. But if I, I didn't mention before, I don't think, that AMP is an open source project. Did I say this before? I think I didn't say this. Google started AMP, but AMP is open source. It now is part of the OpenJS family. And if you go to GitHub, you can actually look at all of AMP's code over here, and all the issues and so on. You can get involved in AMP, you can contribute to AMP. People often do this, and you can be part of the AMP community and help make this thing. Anyway, back to our class over here. You will see a few things over here. This is uh, AMP's boilerplate CSS, which will hide the page until the end runtime is loaded, uh, end runtime is loaded, because the end runtime will then apply some classes to the page and do some styling and do some layout, then show the page. And then all of your CSS appears in the style AMP custom tag over here. Now for valid AMP, you wanna have everything be in a single page, so a single page request can show everything. So AMP requires you to put your CSS in line also it requires no more than 75K, so it isn't too large and doesn't slow things down too much. If you're making an AMP project, an AMP project in the real world, you'd be using a build process that would build your CSS somewhere and then at the last step, paste it into HTML. So after all those things, at the bottom, there's the project, HTML. Pretty straightforward, it's just a 
header there and some text. We can look at this by going to show. I'm going to show in a new window because then I can actually see errors in the validator. And there's an error over here. See this uh, one over here? Does that appear if I do this on the screen? Does that pop up there appear? Yeah, only the part of the pop up, actually. Be part of it? Yeah. See, there's an error message there. Yeah. So there's an error message there because I'm using image instead of AMP image. Let's go into the actual exercises now. It's a good transition. I just said this before. There's Lightning Bolt or AMP. So AMP image is the first component we're going to use. Oh, here's some more components, Twitter, YouTube, OK. Also, you'll notice, sorry, that for certain components, it's required to add a bit of JavaScript here to make the component actually run. The AMP runtime contains JavaScript to run things like images, but not everything, because AMP has many components. If they were all in the same runtime, it would be very large and very inefficient. All right, AMP image. So our first goal is to fix this validation error on our site, use our very first AMP component. We'll also see how some components get replaced, sorry, some HTML tags get replaced by other components. I'm going to zoom and get a little closer here. I was too far away. There we go. I'm still kind of far away. Let's zoom a little closer even. Oh, uh, look at that. Now I'm very close. All right. So actually, I think I'm too far down now. That looks more natural. There we go. So uh, the first goal is to see how uh, an, a, a, an HTML tag gets replaced by an AMP component. AMP image is one of the few cases where AMP wants to replace a built-in HTML tag with its own component. There's maybe two of these cases out there. I think video is the other case. It does this because it wants to control how images load. One of the biggest sources of slowness in the web is images, especially large images. And AMP wants to be able to control those things, where they load, to allow for responsive layouts, to do other kinds of things for you. So instead of using image, use AMP image. It also wants to be able to require dimensions in there so that the browser can leave space, things, leave, leave space for things and layout is stable. And also, it wants to do lazy loading, also called, in this case, in viewport prioritization. So if your site is being looked at by someone on a phone over here, actually, here's a nice picture of a phone in my hand, and there's images that are down somewhere, like three screens down, well, loading those images while people are looking at things up here is inefficient because things in the viewport load more slowly. So what AMP will do for you automatically is as you scroll down, it will see, oh, this person's getting closer and closer to my image, load the image now. This is true for all, actually all AMP components, for videos, for anything. They load uh, lazily for maximum performance. So our first goal over here is to replace image with AMP image on our site. It is not hard because all you're doing is changing image to AMP image. And you're going to keep the source attribute and add in width and height, and that's going to be it. If you get stuck on any of these things you're doing, I recommend going to amp.dev. This documentation site we make has all kinds of useful things, including you know, image information. If you go to one of these pages, you'll see all kinds of information, including, of course, a useful example of how it looks in real life. And you can also open the, this playground over here and then go ahead and modify things yourself and see things change live. If it changes the width over here. Oh, that looks great now. <laughs> so if you get stuck, go to documentation and try things out there. But I want you now to try this yourself, to change image to AMP image. When you get it done, please put your uh, glitch link in the chat. We can all see it. And I'll do this myself. I'm going to take this out of the presentation and stick it somewhere else to the side and do it myself. If you have questions on this, let me know. Otherwise, just change your image to an AMP image, close the tag, and add the height and the width. And let me know when you're done. I'm going to mute here for a minute while you do this. And uh, again, as you get this done, please feel free to put this in the chat. Put your glitch link in the chat. We can all see it.
I see one over here. Okay, let's stick this over here. You've got one. Looks like it's a bit on the wide side. <laughs> Made the ugly bike a bit uglier. Well, it's a cheese bike. It's not there for looks, it's there to be edible. So something is wrong here because you also have an error message from AMP. Oh, what did you do with this? Whiff, what's in the code here? Oh, you know what you did? You misspelled the word width. So there should be a D in there. So add a D to the word width. That should fix all your problems. You made it smaller than mine, but the, the um, dimensions are the same. So it should still look fine once you fix this width over here. I see one more. There we go. It looks nice. It looks like it's also, the dimensions look a little strange to me again. Let me see if I can figure out why your dimensions look strange. Well, it's just because you made it wider than I did. So if you use 480 height and 640 width, it will look like it usually looks. If you use other dimensions, it might just look stranger. It's going to constrain this to the dimensions that you choose. You guys are good. Oh, there, look at this. Yay. Very nice. An impossible diamond, also very nice. And let's go back and look at overjoyed denim. All right, excellent. Very good. Very well done. And here's the solution. You didn't get it yet. It's amp image. Keep the source as it is, add it in width and height, and then close amp image and you're done. Any comments or questions on this? It's not very exciting yet because it's just what it is. Let me show you my example over here. It looks kind of like yours. This is fine, but notice though, if I actually have a smaller device, it's off the screen. That's not good. Let's go to the responsive view over here. So for bigger things, it shows, and as the screen gets smaller, it goes off the edge. So let's say you want to not do that. You want to make it responsive instead. We're going to use the AMP's layout system now to do this. So we're just going to add over here a single thing. Uh, where is that's the original? You go away. Let me show you my code over here. So with me, just go over here and add in one more attribute. Layout equals responsive. Add that in there, and suddenly and usefully, it should become responsive. Try that. Did that work? We'll look at some more examples up here. I think that the layout here seems like it's a little strange somehow. The image is there. There's no errors. Yeah, you just chose different dimensions than I did, so it's going to be a little bit different looking. That looks good, though. Abstracted festive Lancer. Is this responsive yet? Oh, look at this. You're responsive. Yeah. So this is an example of AMP trying to make things easier for you, the developer. All AMP components are responsive and tries to make things simpler. That would require some work usually. Responsive design is still going to be a thing which requires some effort, but less effort than usual, hopefully. All right, have you done this? You've got your responsive layout there. If so, we'll show that over here. There it is. Layout equals responsive. There we go. There's various kinds of layout you can use. I'll show you some other examples here of layout and AMP for different kinds of purposes. There's a nice demo over here. If I go to amp.dev and can I find this now? Yeah, here we go. The first result. Here's different kinds of AMP layouts. Fill means that it fills the space available to it. So it takes the size of its parent. Fixed means ignore all those things. Use the size you've chosen no matter what. Don't make it responsive. I use fixed a lot, actually. 
Intrinsic uses the intrinsic size, response we've seen before. There's a flex box version here. There's one that keeps the height constant. There's many kinds of layout here for many, many different kinds of purposes. Um, no display means don't show it at all. So many ways to do layout. Is there an error on this page? Oh, interesting. That's worth noticing. <laughs> I should report this. There's actually a validation error on this page over here. Anyway, going back over here to our presentation again, let's do something a little more complicated, but not much more complicated. We saw this before earlier on the talk, kind of like a YouTube video. Now we'll do it ourselves. It's our first case when we're going to use a uh, synthetic attribute from AMP that we haven't used before. So for AMP YouTube, we have to do two new things. One is use the attribute to declare the ID, and two is include its JavaScript. So for this, you may want to use documentation. AMP YouTube will be, I think you're going to add from scratch over here. You're going to add width 480 and height 270. Making it responsive would be nice. If you want to, you don't have to. And then data video ID is used to show the to choose the ID of the video. How do you find the ID in YouTube? If I go to YouTube and look around for a random video, I guess it's going to be a video that I made. Uh, there's a thing over here after a watch and the question mark V equals something. That happens to be the ID of the video. So if you choose this, you can choose any video you want to, or you can use one over here in this presentation. That's also totally fine. That's a nice video. And what else should we do? Oh yeah, the script is required for this. So to find the script you need to make this work, I would again go to amp.dev, look up amp dash YouTube. And then the first thing you'll see at the top of the screen here is the required JavaScript. So click the little clipboard icon to copy it and put it in your project. And there you go. So this is our next exercise, adding a video to our site with this size, a video ID of your choice, and include that script tag. And if you want to make it responsive, responsive is always nice. So go ahead and do this. If you have any questions, ask the questions or put it in the chat. I'll mute again and do this myself with you. Uh, someone already is done, maybe. Knowing Sticky Surgeon. Oh, look at this. It's a video. There's Malta, who is the original creator of AMP. Very nice. That was quick. I'll mute again, and you can keep working on this. Okay, it's been a couple minutes here. 
Does anyone else have this and want to share it? Share your video with the world. I'll show you my project. It's not that exciting, but this is the actual video here mentioned in the presentation. See, this is making a cheese bike. That's quality video. Do you want another minute? Let's do that. Okay, I see one more, <laughs> two more. Yeah, if it's not working, then feel free to add, uh, feel free to send the link in the chat there and we can look at it with you. But we got a few more. Okay, we're coming in here. Let me show some of these things here. Hey, oh, look at this, Jason Braz, I'm yours. I've heard that song maybe once too many. He looks good though. All right, very good. And Nettie, Silky, Rayon. Wow, everyone's got different videos here. Very nice. Wool Tundra Mustard. And there's a lovely other image from our project you put in there. I don't see a video, but at least you've got this other image of a bottle. It's a bit on the long side. I think your dimensions might be something. I'll have to saw an error there from AMP. Uh, interesting. You're on the right track here. Um, also, you have to close the AMP image or it confuses it. If you don't close it, it will confuse HTML because they're actually web components are not HTML tags. You have to close it with a slash, uh, sorry, a bracket slash AMP image slash. Also, the script here, I guess that'll probably work putting it over here. It's better to put it in the head, but it should work. Maybe it didn't work because I don't see a video. So that could be your problem. Maybe stick that in the head. Let's see if this is the error we have here. Oh, interesting. The parent is AMP image. Yeah, I think actually your whole problem is that you didn't close AMP image. So then it ends up making this, it tries to make this AMP image and close things beneath it and confuses everything. So just close the AMP image tag and your problems should go away. But I also put the script for AMP YouTube in the head just to be on the safe side. Looks good. Uh, Taraka, if you want to share yours, you can. I know you shared it before. Overjoyed Denim Outrigger. If you don't mind, I'm just going to look at it here with you. I see an error message here. See, AMP validation can be useful. Oh, that could be it. It may just require the JavaScript. Adding the JavaScript will probably save you. Yep, this looks good. All you lack is the JavaScript. So put that up top over here, this JavaScript over here, and that will save it. I'll stick this in the chat also just for fun. That should be in the, in the top there. I see one more private message here about one that isn't working. So I want to look at that privately for a moment. I'm gonna show the solution. We're looking at this private one over here and I can help you debug. Uh -oh, there it is, being public. Oh, 
Okay. Here's the solution. Taraka, very good. And I'm gonna look here at this private one and see what's going on. Uh, private person. Let's see, looking at your code over here. Uh, yeah, you've got to close the AMP image also, private person. So I'm gonna type it over here. Close your AMP image tag. It's just the thing that HTML requires you to do and AMP doesn't really have much control over that. So there's that and also private person add the YouTube JavaScript to the head. So now I will show the solution again. There it is. Closing this private one over here. And uh, again, add this over here to the head of the document, somewhere near v0.js, ideally, but it doesn't matter where it is. And there you go. Any comments or questions on all of that? It may feel complicated at first, it may not, but with AMP, it's, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to make things work. I mean, it depends what you're trying to do, but basic stuff like adding a video is usually super simple. All right, let's go on then. We've done this, let's get more complicated. <laughs> Thanks for saying this is fun. I enjoy these things because it's not that hard. It's hard at first, but once you get used to it, it isn't that hard and you can't do that many things wrong. So, all right, to add more things, use documentation, yay. So let's add something more complicated. We're gonna add a carousel of images. Sometimes called an image slider, where you get to either click through here and the arrows and show different images on a desktop device or on a mobile screen. A touch screen, you swipe things around. It's called an image carousel sometimes. So to do this is gonna require using documentation. AMP carousel, so that's fine. You go to documentation and look at things like, okay, what does it do? How do I customize it with HTML attributes? Does it require its own script tag? How do I style it? Things like that. Let's look at the actual documentation instead of the slide. On the left hand, left hand side, you see various components. Under C is AMP carousel. Not under A because they're all AMP something. It'd be a very long A section. So you see for the carousel, AMP carousel. Here's the AMP carousel documentation. Notice it's version two. It also is a version one. Version two is one better than version one. Notice there's a required script as most components are gonna have. So you're gonna add that script to your uh, HTML document to make this work. And then there's various attributes you can use to customize it. Let's look down here, there's probably gonna be an example. There's an example of AMP carousel. Notice how this works. It's simply a carousel tag with usual AMP things with height, layout if you want. And then the things inside that are what gets slid around. Often there'll be AMP images, it could be videos, it could be blocks of text, it could be anything. But all the children of AMP carousel are the things that will be part of the carousel. That's really it. You can customize it with different attributes over here, like type, for example. You can choose one of two types. The carousel type is the default. If you choose nothing, then you'll get carousel. It means all the slides are there and they're all seen at the same time. You just scroll them and they can be different widths and so on. Slides is one slide at a time. So each slide goes into place as you scroll. We're gonna use type slides in this current exercise. Also controls means you always show left and right arrows. Otherwise they may disappear sometimes. You can also have a delay built in. You can do a loop so that once you get past the last item, you return to the first item. If you use like slick or owl carousels out there, or other jQuery carousels, they have more options than this does. This is just the most common option. So it can be a small library and load quickly. Any questions on the carousel? Here's an example. Again, I showed you this before, I think. This is just copied from the documentation page. Carousel, width, height, layout if you want, type equals slides if you want, or other kinds of types. And then inside there, the children are the things that get moved around in the slider. In this case, there's three images. Having seen that, we'll do it ourselves now. So 
Remember, if you want to find an image here in our Glitch project, you go to that Assets tab over there. This is going to get confusing now. Here's, okay, here's my project. If you go to the Assets area here, there's images. Clicking on these things zooms it into a light box and shows you the URL you can use to actually use that image. If I copy this over here and just stuck it into a tab in a browser, there's a mouse. Nice. So we are now going to make a carousel. So put it above the YouTube video, or actually below if you want to. Make it responsive if you'd like. Use type slides. Make it so that after the last slide, it loops back to the first slide. If you use the size of 412 width and 309 height, it will look nice with the styles that are already on the page. And these three images here, Cheddar, Chaser, Cheese, uh, cheese and Mouse, look good in that size ratio. Although other images are totally fine, they may just look funnier. So now, take a few minutes, make your own carousel. If you have questions, check out the documentation page, or ask me, or a little of both. I will get a mute, and I'll do this myself too. All right, Pazinda, you're the fastest person here. <laughs> Knowing Sticky Surgeon. Hey, it's a carousel. And you even chose, look at this, a video from web.dev. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually I actually gave a talk on this topic at DrupalCon yesterday. And I, I think I might have copied this slide for my talk because it's a nice slide. Cumulative layout shift. Very nice. I'll mute again, and oh, we got one more. This is an unusually quick class over here. And here's his autoplay, it looks like. One image seems to be a little blank. And there's an error message also here. I think you're missing a source attribute here. See, this uh, AMP validation is useful. So look for a missing source attribute. That could be why you're not getting an image over here for this one. There you go. Valid AMP has various ways it's useful. And we get one more. Abstracted Festive Lancer. There's Jason again. And a helmet, a second helmet. And suspense. And a third helmet. And they're looping. This is great. If you're still working on this, keep working on it. We'll give you another couple minutes to get this going. I'll mute again. If you have questions also, feel free to put your glitch in the chat and we can look at it together.
Okay, I see some more over here. Here's Ready Bounce Daisy. All right, making some progress. I see two validation errors here. So let's see what's going on with this one. It looks like you didn't choose width and height for the AMP image or the AMP YouTube. So it's complaining about that somewhere. Yeah, it's better to choose the width for the carousel, also not just the height. It may look a little better that way, but otherwise it looks like you've got three images over there. You didn't use type equals slides, you used carousel, so they're all appearing together. And the image over here doesn't have, I'll make this bigger, this image doesn't have any width and height attributes. So it will cause some complaining about that. But it's a carousel, it's good. And I see more coming in now. Let me just show a few more of these here. Nice. Gloves, the whole gloves montage here from Bull Tundra Mustard. And possible diamond, possible diamond base. There's the bike, a basket, some gloves. All right, so you gotta make your own choices with these things. And metal silky rayon. This is the image size that I recommended, I think, the smaller image size. Very nice, perfect. I see one, oh, you got it, okay. Yeah, there's that one. I think because the images are smaller than the carousel, we're seeing a few things at once. Also, I think you must have broken your YouTube video because I see the HTML sitting there. <laughs> so take a look at that. Actually, let's look at that together here. Yeah, I think you lost the beginning of the AMP YouTube HTML. See this? You just deleted the very first part of that. So just go back and stick AMP YouTube back in there. You should restore your video to its usual beauty. If you also choose width for your carousel, you can control how big it is and how many slides appear there at once. Otherwise, AMP will just choose the width of the container. So this is really good. Here's the answer over here. It looks like you pretty much all got this, but there it is, AMP carousel, the width, the height, responsive layout in this case. Notice we chose the same width and height for everything here because we're gonna have type slides where one slide appears at a time. So everything's the same width and height and the same layout everywhere. We also chose loop over here so that it loops back from the beginning, the end, end to the beginning. And then inside the carousel are three AMP images. There you go. And of course, including this JavaScript here, will make it actually work. Any questions, comments so far? Having done a few things here with AMP, you have comments so far. Do I have advice for you? As you know, React, and you're 11 years old. I'm impressed that you're still doing this when you're 11. Uh, I started when I was eight, but I wasn't able to do these kinds of things when I was eight because they didn't exist yet. That's pretty good. Uh, React is really useful because React powers a lot of sites on the web and you know everyone uses React these days. My advice is just keep on building things and learning things. Do things that you are curious about because I always loved programming. I just sat there and just said, oh, I'm gonna make this happen. How does this work? So just keep on trying stuff. Learn as many things as possible. And if you wanna learn like you know JavaScript, it's good to learn like Python or some sort of other backend language as well or to learn Node. Just keep on doing stuff and just have fun with it. Very good. So let's go on over here. Find new components you don't know yet. You can look at the documentation to find things. As we showed you before, things are listed here on the left. There's many, many components over here uh, for Facebook embeds. AmpGeo helps you customize things by geographic location, even IMGUR, look at that. Different video players, Lightbox gallery, light boxes. AMP list is more for loading live content with a bit of JavaScript sometimes and all kinds of stuff, more complicated menus. You find various things over here, pixels for sending pixels to analytics packages and so on. Let's say we had a goal of adding some, okay, there's an example of this before already. Let's add uh, social sharing links over here. So we're gonna find here using documentation how to add 
social sharing links all by ourselves. They look kind of like this in the bottom of the screen. You'll see a lovely icon from a network of some sort and a lovely color, which they have decided for their branding reasons. So there's a component that lets you do this with AMP. Your goal is to find this component and add it to the bottom of your page using documentation. I'll give you a hint. Look for social sharing. So if you uh, put these at the bottom of your page and use a div with class social bar, it'll look nice. If you, especially if you use the size 44 by 44, we've got beautiful little circles there because we have CSS that looks for social bar and styles things accordingly. So use documentation, find the right component, add social sharing links, and I recommend using the div with class social bar and the size 44 by 44. Any questions on this? This is more self-directed. Now that you're an AMP expert, you can just go there, find the component you want to use, and just go ahead and use it. If you have questions, again, please just let me know. I will mute again as we do this together. And we've got one over here. Cindy again wins the speed contest. Let's close other ones here. All right, you've got them there, very good. I'm gonna show you how mine looks because notice I have beautiful circles at the bottom, bottom over here. So if you're done with this, Try to use the styles that we have to make those into lovely circles. I'm gonna look at your code here for a minute. Yeah, those are good. If you specify the size over here and use the class social bar, it will look more beautiful, but you have, you did it right. You have the stuff there, you have the right components. That's the important part. But try this div class social bar and try using width and height 44. Uh, 
Okay, we've got one more. Hey, look at those. Nice. And there are circles. Very good. I'm gonna go there where they aren't centered. Yeah, those look really good. If you use that class there in your div, that uh, div class social bar, it'll look very beautiful. Here, I'm gonna show you, uh, well, I'll start giving you some hints because we're running out of time actually. So one hint is that you probably got this already. The component is called amp social share. And there's your JavaScript you'll need over there. And there's an example over here, how it's gonna look. So you use type to choose the type of network that's gonna be there. Use width and height. There's more things that we didn't actually use, like what actually you send when they people share things. I see now these are starting to flow in all of a sudden. We're seeing a bunch of different examples here. Hey, look at that. Beautiful circles and LinkedIn twice. <laughs> and Pasindu's back. Knowing a sticky surgeon, ah, beautiful circles. Very, very nice. And we have wool, tundra, mustard, and very nice little circles down there. Big O notation, yes, computer science. Good stuff. Let me show the solution here because we're running out of time. That's all it is. This social bar class, we have CSS for this in the project, so it'll make it look pretty. And the AMP social share, specify width and height to make it the size that you want. Type chooses the kind of social network you have, and that's it. I don't know if we have time for one more thing or not because it's almost, for me, 12 o'clock. For you, it's like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or something else. I forget the time difference now. What is it there? Oh, it's where, okay, you're an hour and a half. You're like India, where you're, India's 10 and a half hours from where I am, nine and a half hours. Uh, let me ask our organizers here, are we out of time? You want to do one more thing? Or should we call a halt to this because it's almost time to stop? Any organizers there who are on the call? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we have time if you are okay. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, sure. It's the most complicated thing. So, this is the part from the next class, actually, which is oh, okay. Well, let me skip these things. I think I said these things before. As for valid amp, 75k of CSS is your limit. Although, if your valid amp isn't important to you, then you don't have to do that. There's some CSS valid AMP. We discussed this before. We see now it's a pretty useful because the AMP validator finds errors for you in your own code even and shows you where you've done things you can fix to make it work. Before I go to the last exercise here, which is making a menu, are there any questions about the AMP open source project, about AMP, about Web Vitals and AMP? Anything else? you want to ask about or comment about so far from what you've seen? You can ask in the chat or on your microphone. All good for you. I can also note that people have traditionally used AMP in the following way. When it was first created, it was used on mobile pages only. So publishers used it to create mobile versions of their articles. And they would publish a desktop version for desktop pages and an AMP version for mobile pages. They were paired together. And then if people use desktop, they'd get your HTML page. If they use mobile, your AMP HTML page, and then use a link attribute, or rather a link, um, a link tag to tell uh, search engines that they're the same page. We see this still over here in our project. If you go over to this link area over here, you'll still see a link really close canonical. This is used to link the non-amp page with an amp page. 
You can still do this. You want to have a more complicated desktop page and a simpler AMP mobile page, but it's easier not to. It's easier to use AMP for everything if you can. So for pages that are simpler, that aren't too complicated, they don't require custom JavaScript, you might as well use AMP because it'll be faster. For pages that are uh, more complicated, more elaborate, if you're making your own uh, Gmail program, for example, or something more complicated, or a beautiful interactive animation, or a game, or something, then just don't use AMP for that kind of thing. Use various other means to try to make it fast. So uh, yeah, mobile pages, yes, they've, we, we now call it AMP <laughs> instead of calling it accelerated mobile pages, but it's still known by its original name. It's just grown a lot since it first started. It's become more of a full-featured web components library and less of a thing for making simpler mobile versions of desktop pages. Tarak has a good question. Can you use other components you're making yourself? Are you struck with the components that are, that are given to you here? Can you make more components? So interesting question. You can build your own components, but that's to be part of the AMP open source project. So if you want to make your own components, you have to go through the AMP open source project process to suggest something and say, hey, I want to make my own components. What do you all think? People will comment on that. Then it becomes usable for everybody in the entire AMP community all across the world. It isn't just for yourself. That's a bit different than other things out there. Like if you're using React, of course, you just use components that exist, mix in your own components. That's fine. This is for everybody. So again, this is changing. If valid AMP isn't important to you, you're welcome to make your own web components and add those to AMP components. This is done pretty often and use them all together, but it won't be valid AMP. You won't get the benefit of the AMP cache. But it's a totally valid way of using AMP. And actually, in the future, this is being encouraged more and more. There's a project called Bento AMP currently underway, rewriting all of the AMP components in React, rather in Preact, sorry, and then making them all usable anywhere on the web. So the goal is that once this is done, you'll be able to add AMP components to your own page, and they'll work just fine, even out without the AMP runtime. It's kind of true now. People have done this for years, and it's worked just fine but it isn't really guaranteed to work. The goal is to make this guaranteed to work, so by hopefully early next year sometime, it'll be easy to use AMP components and other things all together on web pages. For now, it's safer to use AMP pages with just AMP components, but you don't have to. So let's do the final exercise over here. This is a bit more elaborate because it goes into actions and events. Remember jQuery? And jQuery came out and made the web easier to use for JavaScript because it made things just a lot simpler. So for example, if you're using jQuery, I had a warning message, I have a button that can be clicked, can hide that message. You might use this kind of code over here. A div with ID equals warning, some text inside of it, and then a button with this following onClick handler here, you got the warning div here by using dollar sign pound warning. You grab that DOM element in jQuery and use the hide method to hide it. It made it pretty simple. You just said button on click equals dollar warning dot hide, and there it was. AMP has a similar notation to this. This is the AMP version of the same thing. We have a div, give it ID warning, and have your button over here use the on attribute, in this case, not on click, but on, and then the actual event and the div and the action are all there in quotation marks. You use tap, which is a uh, event that AMP creates for you that encapsulates both a button click and a mouse tap. Tap colon warning dot hide. Again, tap being the event, warning being the idea of the div, hide being the action. Pretty similar, pretty easy to use. That's basic events and actions. So, oh, there it is, bigger and easier to see, and of course, animated. We'll do this ourselves in a minute. I'm just gonna show you here how this looks on the AMP site. If you look at events and actions, there's, very, there's a lot more possibilities over here with events and actions than just that. Look at events and actions, or we call actions and events. You'll see there's this more general syntax over here for more complicated things. It's always the name of the event, a colon, the ID of the DOM element you want to actually affect, and then a dot, the method name, and then sometimes there's arguments too. So there's uh, certain events that are standard DOM events that you'll notice. 
or the event there, like tap, for example. And then you'll see that certain elements have their own events, like change for an input when the actual content's changed, input debounced, and then certain AMP components also throw their own events. Like for AMP carousel, for example, slide change happens when a slide changes. So you can then, when a slide changes in the carousel, find that somewhere else and do something with that. AMP list has events. There's, oh, look at this, AMP sidebar. This is convenient because we'll use this in a minute over here. These events we don't actually don't use, but AMP sidebar, we're gonna use to make a menu in a minute. That's kind of fun. Uh, we'll look over here at AMP uh, element specific actions. So the sidebar, which is a mobile menu thing, you can use actions to open it, close it, or toggle its state. So let's look at the sidebar documentation now because we're gonna make a menu here in a minute. Let's look over here again. Let's go find AMP sidebar. This is a component that you can use to add a traditional mobile menu where it pops out from the side. There it is, it requires its own JavaScript as most things do in AMP. And it's got attributes you can use to customize it. You can say left side or right side. The layout should be no display in the beginning because you wanna hide the menu when you first see the screen. And here's an example of using it over here. Is there a playground here somewhere? I guess there is not a playground for this one. Probably is somewhere. I'm pretty sure we have a playground for this somewhere. Do we? No, I don't see one. Maybe there isn't. Anyway, this is how it kind of works. So how's it gonna work over here in more detail? If you call it the ID of the sidebar, Oh yeah, that's the idea is a lot of things are already there in AMP for you. Most things that you do on the web already exist in AMP. Actually, I didn't say this before, a better answer to your question. You can use AMP script to make your own JavaScript to actually make your own interactions in AMP from scratch. This JavaScript runs in a web worker, so it can't interrupt the main thread. And it's restricted in various ways because it's in a web worker and because AMP wants to be careful with you so you don't uh, do things to the screen that will confuse your user or cause layout shift or cause things to be slow. But you can use AMP script to make your own component-like interactions too. So it's interesting to think about that. AMP script isn't part of this workshop today, but we have a nice AMP script demo. Actually, if you're curious, all right, and I'm distracted. I made this nice tutorial I'm very proud of over here for AMP script. If you wanna explore this as a more advanced topic later on, where is it? Check out this tutorial over here if you want to. It's about using JavaScript and AMP, creating your own UI widget with custom JavaScript and AMP. Back to our topic over here. So AMP sidebar makes this lovely menu like the example you see in the slide. If you have the menu itself and a div ID sidebar one, you can use sidebar one dot open to open it, close to close it, toggle to toggle between open and closed. And we're going to have to use actions and events here. So you're gonna to have to have uh, a, a little button here which opens it, which is gonna then use the stuff you saw over here in documentation to open the div when that's pressed. And you're gonna also wanna have a close button with an X that will then close it. And again, the way this looks over here is that you can use this, let's go back over here, this notation of yeah, event name colon ID dot method to do things. So for example, uh, tap colon sidebar one dot open. So our goal here is to put this menu over here. If you use class navbar trigger on the div, it will look nice. Add an AMP sidebar component, put it right below the body because if it's not a direct child of body, it will look a little funny. You can put whatever you want to put it, but the sidebar, AMP sidebar component does a great overlay and opacity on the whole screen. This look right has to be right below the body. And then in the sidebar, put in a nav element with some links and a typical UL, LI kind of thing. If you use the class label on the ULs and nav item on LIs, it will look nice. And finally, add a div to the sidebar with an X in it that closes the menu when it's tapped. This is your last project. I know this is more elaborate than previous projects. I've given you fewer instructions. If you're confused, 
please ask questions. I'm gonna also copy into the chat over here. Once I get this here, I've gotta have it in, oh shoot, hold on. I'm gonna copy into the chat the, um, the emoji extended characters for the menu and the close button. I've just gotta pull that over here again in a different tab because I don't want to ruin the presentation. So hold on a second, here we go, okay. So I'm copying in here. This is the close button X, that'll look nice there. And here is the three line character. This makes sense, do you have questions on this? I know there's a lot of stuff to do. But it isn't that complicated once you get the hang of it. You just want to use actions and events to open and close your AMP sidebar. I will now mute and go for it. I'll do it myself also while you're doing it.
And we've got one over here. All right, we're getting there. Yeah, look at that. That's the menu. If you add the classes over here, it should look a little prettier. I'll show you how mine looks over here. It takes some working to get just looking like this, but it can be done. The CSS we've given you in the project to make this look really pretty, just add those classes in there. I assume this was happening here, it's just the classes are missing. Oops. Oh, that's, that's the right class. Oh, I think all you need here actually is something inside, inside this button because the button is empty. This is good though, on tap sidebar one toggle and the sidebar is probably gonna be called sidebar one. Yeah, look at, very good. Yeah, if you give a class to the UL and a class to the LIs there, they'll look pretty too. You're almost done here with this. This is great. And again, here's the classes. If you add a the class label to the ULs and the class nav item to the LIs, it'll look all pretty. Is anyone else making progress over here? <laughs> I know this is a more elaborate exercise. So let me show you what I've done over here. A little bit of what I've done to give you a start. <laughs> oh wait, oh, embarrassing output here. You're still working on it. Can I show this yet? Or are you keeping it kind of private until, until you've got it? We've got one more. You can, okay. Let's look at this wool tundra mustard because eh, it's a menu. Look at this. It looks great. I think it's just a matter of styling to get the menu to be on the left of the, of the text instead of above it. And the X usually would be on top, but they have all the styles there. It works. This is pretty good. You have four errors though. Oh, this is interesting. We didn't talk about this at all. It's complaining because you don't have roles and tab indexes in your divs. Uh, AMP requires this for valid AMP because 
roles and tab indexes make it better for people using screen readers and other devices that are for people that have disabilities so you can know what a button is and so on. But otherwise, it looks really good. If you look over here at your menu, that looks nice. Amp sidebar. You put it inside another div, which could make it look strange because it's not the direct child of the body, but it looks fine, it turns out. No display, side equals left, class equals sidebar. All oh, that looks really good. Where's the header over here? Div class equals. This looks good. Oh, I see why you have this in the wrong order because the H2 goes around this div as well. I think if the H2 is just around Chico's cheese bicycles and then this div is by itself, make it the menu to be where you want it to be. Super close to making it look exactly right. That's great. Let me show Taraka's over here. Oh, look at that, that looks good. Beautiful design. Okay, the sidebar itself, you know, is a little bit more primitive looking, but this is exactly right. And it closes and opens perfectly. Toggle sidebar. Doesn't actually toggle it, but those work. Let's jump into dev tools over here. What do we have? That looks really nice. Is there a toggle there somewhere inside your sidebar? There's your close button. There's your UL over there. Huh, this would actually work, but you didn't call it sidebar one. You just called it sidebar. I find that most mistakes I make in AMP are the dumb mistakes <laughs> because it's pretty simple. It's hard to make the smart mistakes, but dumb mistakes can be hard to find because they're, they're still mistakes. This is good. Let me show the uh, solution over here because we're Running kind of late. So if you add to your header, this div class equals add bar trigger, and then you give it role equals button, tab index equals zero. Those two things are required for valid amp for, again, for people with disabilities. The key parts here, really the only key part is having the on tap colon sidebar one dot toggle with this class that will look nice. And then the amp sidebar itself should look kind of like this. AMP sidebar, we give it the class sidebar, we'll style it for you with our CSS. We give it an ID, we've chosen layout no display so it isn't shown at first. We've chosen the left side and I just scrolled by accident there. And then inside there you have this div with the X in it. And the key part there again is the on tap colon sidebar one dot toggle. This class nav bar trigger makes it look nice. Inside there is our nav and that's really it except for, of course, adding the JavaScript over here so that everything works. I'm going to skip this last part because it's going to be boring. Uh, anyway, there's the answer. I'll get back to this. Oh, good question. AMP versus PWA. That's a great question. There are both good ways to do it. AMP tends to be just kind of fast because it tends to be simple. But PWA, if you keep your JavaScript kind of small, once you load the first page up and load the actual JS that runs the PWA, you're pretty fast afterwards. You avoid page transitions you're using JavaScript to load a new content. So PWAs are pretty good. Actually, you can use them both, to, both together. A few patterns are possible. One really cool pattern that doesn't use very much is you can embed AMP pages within other web pages. You can use Shadow AMP to actually embed an entire AMP page within a single DOM element. It's pretty cool for people that have AMP pages already. You can then use AMP pages inside other content. One of the goals of AMP was to be a portable content unit. So it's actually made to be portable in that way and can be stuck inside other web pages. Uh, but the most popular pattern I see is, I kind of was starting to describe a minute ago, the most popular pattern I see is to make the first page people go to an AMP page because AMP is a fast way to get somewhere, especially from search. So landing pages, home pages, those kinds of things you get to from search, make those pages AMP. So AMP, the first page loads very fast. Meanwhile, when you're on that AMP page, use a component that's called AMP install service worker. You can use this component to install, that's right, a service worker and installs your JavaScript. So while the user is looking at your beautiful first opening page, 
the service worker is loading up and starting up and then installing its JavaScript, then it can control the page. So on the user's very next click, they're brought in PWA immediately. It's a really nice pattern. So again, the first page is AMP, and subsequent pages you get in the PWA right away. There's various ways to do this. And yeah, it's a pretty good way to use AMP to get people to your page fast, and then get your JavaScript loaded up, and then kick it off and make the PWA experience. That's a good question. Any other comments or questions? If there aren't, I know it's late over there and lunchtime over here. And I want to thank you all for coming here. Oh, IO 2016. Yeah, this was brand new back then. Um, I think Paul Backhouse gave a talk on the main stage about AMP and PWA discussing three different patterns you can use. We have more talks about that online. It's a commonly discussed issue. Skipping all these things. You build a site, that's great. Um, to do more, here's actually a glitch you can use to get all the exercises that are completed. If you enjoyed this course, that's actually the wrong link. <laughs> if you enjoyed this course, you can go here to our site. This was most of the beginning course done very quickly. There's also two more courses to get involved into more complicated topics, like more actions and events, uh, state variables and data binding and getting things from the server and uh, formatting data with mustache templates, all those things. So thank you for coming. I had a survey over here I was going to show you. I want to show you the first page again first. Uh, there's my Twitter over there, Ben Morse. If you use Twitter, then say hello there on Twitter. And I have a survey, but I didn't know if we actually had a prize for the survey or not. Uh, fearless organizer is here. Do we get a prize together for the survey? Pamu. <laughs> we planned to get a prize, but I didn't know if that actually happened or not. And most of these things, we people don't always do surveys, so we gave the survey, people that did the survey, a raffle, and we chose a prize. But I can't find him here. How about a private chat over here? Well, we will see. Uh, if there's a prize to give out, then after the survey, we'll do a raffle and give a prize to the person who wins the raffle. Otherwise, we'll, I guess, not do that. But the survey helps us understand what's good and bad about this workshop and how to improve it. So I'm going to put this link here into the chat. Let me just check the link to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Usually append this to the end. That isn't it. Hold on a second. That was not the right link, apparently. Nah, I thought it was view form at the end of a link. This is an embarrassing moment here. Well, that was it. OK. Oh, we have a, OK, we've got a prize. All right. So I thought this survey over here. And once you've done the survey, we will give a fabulous prize to one lucky winner. We'll do a raffle and we'll give a prize away. So don't lose this chance for an incredible prize. I don't know what it is. It could be like a car, an airplane, a boat, or maybe a better pair of headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Something really incredible and astonishing. So you got to do this survey, otherwise you're going to miss out on the chance for something really amazing, truly astonishing, especially because we're going to use an amazing interface here to actually do the giveaway. COVID-19 desk. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> so we're going to use this wheel of names over here. And as you put your 
as you do your survey and submit them, we'll put your names or email addresses into this thing and we'll do a spin and you'll get a fabulous COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, all right, we get some responses coming in. Three responses. Again, an incredible, astonishing, fabulous prize can be yours. If anyone knows what the prize is, then let me know. Or you can just say what the prize is. We have five responses. That means about 13 or so or 12 are not submitted yet. Seven responses, eight. We'll give us maybe two more minutes. Nine responses. It's a very fast survey, that's why you can do it within a minute or less. I want to see at least 10 because it's got two digits. <laughs> it is not a COVID-19 test kit. We're so close to 10 because we're at nine. I'm gonna begin copying the email addresses here into the Wheel of Names. Wheels begun to spin. Last chance to enter your name. Oh, we got 10, we got 10. We have one more. Here's one more person. Oh, it didn't copy the way I thought it was going to. I'm just gonna type it in. Why is this not understanding what I'm doing here? I'm saying nine entries, but there should be 10. Let's do this again. I think it, it's a different set of names. A different set of, whoops, I'll copy them again. Uh, that's the problem. Let's do this again. There's 10 now. No, that's terrible. That's the word email. We're forgetting somebody. Now there's 11 anyway. Here we go. Okay. 11 people. That's about, it's more than half. That's really pretty good. Are you ready? And what is the prize going to be, Taraka? All I know is it's not a test kit. That leaves a lot of possibilities. <laughs> it's a headset. Headsets are useful, especially now that we're online a lot, at least we are over here. Okay, here we go, we're gonna spin, ready? One, two, three. There it goes. Where is it gonna stop? It's, it's, it's gonna be in the red or the yellow, red, and it is the red. Okay. You are the fabulous winner. So I'm gonna paste this in over here and you all can deal with getting the fabulous headset to our fabulous winner. Any other things you wanna say? If not, thanks for being here tonight. I enjoyed this, hopefully you had a good time. Congratulations, and everyone stay safe. Enjoy your headset. And if you have more questions or comments about AMP or anything else, then say hello on Twitter. Okay, thanks, Ben. Uh, it's been a really fun session. 
actually and i think everybody uh, interacted with you so they had a good understanding and uh, i really learned a lot uh, about uh, these um, new components and all and thank you again and uh, we really appreciate uh, your effort and all to this and uh, have a good day okay for excellent group people really took part and made some jokes and i appreciate that yeah thank you okay thank you again thank you guys uh, have a good night uh, the people here in sri lanka okay